Hello everyone and welcome along to the Watch Journey Part 3. Yep. Here we go. And today, today I'm going to lead. Yeah. yeah taking well, yeah, over the Watch Journalist. <laughs> no, Dave, how's it feel on the side? I'm handing the battle on to the pro. <laughs> yeah, not at all. First of all though, we just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who's written to us. Um, I, I apologise for my terrible tardy responses as in still haven't worked out it use social media, even YouTube, yeah. all of that stuff. So you've been yeah. far better at replying, but the emails we've received um, and it's been overall real po positive. So, but keep- Some keep... abuse, which has been fantastic as well. No, we haven't, <laughs> we, haven't, we, haven't we had some really lovely letters. So thank you guys, very kind. Yeah, very kind. And, and keep them coming. Any questions, keep them coming. Mm -hmm. I, I saw one that was, have I sold my Devine? Never would I sell that Devine. So that, that's always <laughs> gonna stay part of the collection. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's locked away in the bank safe at the moment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I'll be wearing it just, to, just for proof. Mm -hmm. um, right, but today, yep. I mean, what we were gonna do, we said, right, we'd do my journey first. We did my journey, uh, bored you with that. So we were gonna throw it over to Justin Hast and his watch journey, but he's got so many watches and so much of a meandering watch yeah. journey <laughs> that we'd need a full episode for that. And of course, since our last episode, there's been so many things happening. Mm -hmm. I've been to FP Jean, mm -hmm. you've been to Watches and Wonders, mm -hmm. and you've also made a significant purchase. Yes. So we think today yep. we'll try and cover a bit of everything. So let's, I reckon, start with what everyone's talking about, which yep. is Watches and Wonders. Well, actually people, I think also it's fair to say, we thought the second episode, people appreciated the length. So 25, 30 minutes, we, we feel is kind of the sweet spot. A bit like a 38 mil to 40 mil case, or 42 mil case. Uh, 44. 44, sorry, this 44. Is, this is horrible, this is, the, this is the 58 minute episode. Never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> but we thought that's kind of what we're gonna try and run with for the future. So what we'll do is we'll do a periodic um, check-in on the collection, maybe a collection update check-in, just to see where things are. But in this episode, we just thought, God, there's just too much to cover. Yeah. And the watch journey, never ends because of course you know we know what it's like when you get to share these things with friends and i was so excited to show you this in person because i knew you'd kick off about it and actually pete's wearing a jumper today which he thought would match i'm sorry we've got to get some comments about this in, oh, the, in the car <laughs> we've got to get some... who's this by sir who's this uh, by oh, oh this is just it's in case on the someone back wants... it's on the back uh, it's uh Ed Curtis, Stella McCartney, just in case yeah. anyone's looking. So we're gonna link there that up in the show notes. We get 10%, use um, the, the tagline, Pete, 10%. No, we don't. No, no, uh, we, we absolutely don't. Although don't. Russell Brand has the same one. I, I noticed he Fantastic. was wearing one. Yeah, but I thought in homage to yes. a multicolored doll, which we'll get to. We'll get to. In a bit. You can see you can't help but <coughs> Dive straight bring in. Up. But let, let's go. Watch some wonders. Let's go watch some wonders Yeah, watch some wonders. So you went. I did. And I think this is where it's a nice balance because I didn't. And so I saw from afar yep. and I'll have watches in my head that, that, I, that stood out that I particularly liked. Mm -hmm. First of all, though, mm -hmm. before we get to what you like to dislike, <laughs> tell me about the whole experience. How, yep. how was it there? Was there more of a buzz? The watch world's gone crazy since sort of 2020. Yep. Was it bigger and, and so-called better? Yeah, people, it was, it, was, it was completely different to last year. So the Asian markets couldn't travel last year. And my God, you felt it. And to me, it just had this incredible uplifting effect. It was very busy from, from Monday. You know, I was lucky enough to be there Monday, Tuesday. And um, that's kind of just the, the, the international media. And it felt pretty special kind of being one of the first through the doors, just getting that almost like a, you know, that leather in a car, that fresh smell. It's like, what's just Monday, it's 2023. And you come in, Boomer Mercier on the right, uh, I don't be see straight ahead of you. First thing you see as you come into what? Well, sorry, actually, you could go left to 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 Patek and Rolex, but for some reason people tend to go right to start with. I don't know if it's because psychologically we like to just yeah. go right to. Yeah, then, then there's an official thing. To that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Walking a shop, you go. Oh, right. really? You're right. Okay, yeah. there you go. Well, yeah. Richemont because they're the incumbents. I guess they've got the, the the right spots there, and yeah, it was amazing. So the energy was next level. Um, it was very busy in a good way. The energy felt very positive, but I think. We're all aware of the global situation unfolding. And so there's a little bit of it tinged in the background with this like adjustment. So a little bit of anxiety, people won't share that, but underneath a little bit of anxiety, is the volume gonna be there this year? But I think when we look at value, so we're talking about products of, of say above two, 3,000 Swiss francs, that is gonna continue and, and certainly above 20 and 30,000, that's gonna continue to be really hot. But speaking to some friends, you know, speaking to Robin Swithin Bank, he writes for the Financial Times and uh, the New York Times. You know, he he gave me some insights into the drop off of under two thousand Swiss francs wholesale has been catastrophic. So there's there's some real shifts going on in the market. 
but people feel, felt really optimistic. And the energy amongst all of, you know, just to see all your mates there again. And a lot of people I'd met before who were amazing, uh, you know, who you can only connect through social and, and then you get to meet in person is awesome. Because I've listened to a couple of watch podcasts and, and you often will hear them and they're sort of like, oh yeah, we met up and then we went out. How, how does it happen out there? As in, as in, do you arrange with mates? Do you go, right, hey, see you in the bar tonight? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. is it just more of sort of natural, you just end up in a bar well, and suddenly everyone's a watch? To start with, the thing is kind of organized for you. So you, you get in touch with the PR company for the brand. Sorry, we've got the dog just, I tell you what, let him, let him out there just so he doesn't go nuts. <laughs> so you're literally flying around like a, a blue ass fly the whole event. And then through the day, people will, you know, obviously they'll have said, oh, hey, Monday night, let's get together here. Tuesday night, let's get. And then there's the brand events, like Monday night was, I don't know, a Langer, Friends of Langer event. Then on Tuesday. Because you've got no friends, that's perfect for you, right? I was sitting you, at home, twiddling my thumbs. I was sitting at <laughs> Now, mm -hmm. what for you was the best, I mean, booth is the wrong yes. word. So who yep. put on the best show? Show, sure, yeah, yeah. To be honest, I, I immediately think of IWC. So I was asked by a guy called Cam Wolf, the editor at GQ. I was humbled, uh, just dropped into the DM last night when I was drifting off to sleep and he- he's, Your wife knew about that, yeah? She did, she did. There was no naughty pics from Cam, <laughs> although I'm still waiting on that one. Um, but he basically asked me a series of questions. He's like, I'm doing a big story asking people within the industry a few questions about the show. And the first one was, you know, who kind of won the show? And I, I, I think when you talk about the experience and walking into a, a, a stand, the RWC experience was, unparalleled in my view, because they had so aggressively driven into the 70s vibe and this Genta story. Uh, concept cars from the 70s from, from Mercedes, super cool design from Dieter Rams and Vitsu and others, and Braun from the era. So it was just a proper experience. And, and actually a, a quote that someone gave me on, on the stand was amazing. You know, we've got this thing about vintage watches now and we, we keep harking back to old designs, it's because apparently in the 50s, 60s, 70s, people had an optimism for what the future could be. So the designs were avant-garde and they were pushing the envelope and mm -hmm. people were like, yes, we've got to get behind, not everyone got behind the, the Royal Oak and others, but we've got to kind of embrace this idea of the future being positive and let's, let's be creative. But now, because people generally view the future as being negative, we like to hark back to those times. Wow. So it's just a really interesting psychological um, point that was raised. And uh, I, th I think, Justin, you're going to change that, right? Yeah. You've worked with some watch brands. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're such a positive guy. So can we, can we flip that? <laughs> um, yes. I mean, we've already seen that with the independents in the last few years. You know, the independents have just been running their own course. But I'll tell you what, open the door just so you can come in and out. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it open. He wants to be part of the conversation. He wants to be part of the Positivity, he's, yeah. He's, Positivity. Always, he's always part of the conversation. Yeah, po yeah, I think the independents have been doing that for years now. Um, but it's, it's, and it's not a negative thing. I mean, looking back to the 222 from Fashion last year yeah. and the, and the Ingenieur from RWC, what I said in this GQ piece was they have taken on icons, which is one of the great challenges of design in any industry, and they've actually improved on them, in my view, mm -hmm. when it comes to wearability. So the original Ingenieur from the 70s, the Genta Ingenieur, was actually in the 50s it was designed, but it didn't wear very well. It was bloody thick. The, the, the central um, link w wasn't particularly well designed, and it was chunky as, as hell. And this new one wears a lot better. Okay. So yeah, all positive. But IWC win the experiential piece for me. Uh, okay, I mean, and that was the big, I felt like almost the biggest launch there, mm. uh, away from Rolex. Mm. And obviously everyone talks about Rolex, but as in- The puzzle, the emojis. The, 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 the puzzle emojis and, and all of that. <laughs> in, but in terms of the engineer, on, on the wrist, the wrist you perfect. felt they, they did a great job. For me, 40 mil, I'm pleased they, they, uh, they stuck with that sort of sizing. Any larger wouldn't have felt quite right. Uh, time only which is great, it's a format they'll build on inevitably. The only element that I would have liked to have seen changed and, and, and it was very controversial uh, amongst a lot of people was the crown guards. Um, to have the crown guards kind of goes back to the iterations we've seen in the last couple of years where they've attempted to rejuvenate the engineer and haven't really. Um, but I can totally understand why they've done it because from a servicing perspective, to have the crown exposed is a bit of a nightmare because people are gonna just attack it, it's gonna get you know, going to be back the whole time. So that was a purist viewpoint, but the teal or turquoise, or I think they call it aqua, yeah. was punchy. Mm -hmm. But to me, out of the four iterations, it was the titanium that caught me because it was taking the design, redoing it, making it better, but then pushing the envelope even further. We never saw a titanium version in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me a little bit of like the Ocean 2000 on the wrist, um, the Porsche design IWC Ocean 2000 yeah. in titanium. Which, which I know you're a huge, a huge fan. Yeah. And, and so this really felt punchy and the way the dial's been done, there's so much good 
design in it. I loved it. Um, the, the negative mm -hmm. in terms of the feedback mm -hmm. has been the price, price yep. for the engineer. What, what are your thoughts on the price? Because where the, the market that it puts it in, it's, yeah. it's sort of battling against the, the Alpine Eagle, yeah. the a little bit, the Laureato, the Laureato, just, just, just Polo's a little bit up yeah. from it in terms and of the ideas. Into... And I think we've got to be honest here. You know, these these are the types of things that people want to t talk about, and that movement is also in a pilot for a couple of grand. But to me, the investment in the whole rejuvenation of this model, the whole marketing story, the whole, you know, the, the, the development of this, it does condone an increase. And if you look at the market price, we would be kicking off if it was, um, you know, well below where it should be. Okay, it's pushed the envelope and it's up there with the Laureata and we can debate whether the movement, the GP movement, I think is, is superior. But actually the market dictates the pricing in some respects and the market has dictated that it should be at that level. And I'm also a believer that uh, well, IWC are, are looking to, to, to pull themselves up the pricing scale a little bit. And I think there's something about pushing just a little bit further than you're comfortable with. You know, if it were under 10, okay, everyone says, I want it to start with an eight or a nine on. Yeah, we all want it to start with an eight or a nine on. <laughs> yeah. But I think the fact it starts with a 10, it's a little bit of a stretch, mm -hmm. but I think in the world that we're in, that's no bad thing. Talking about the world that we're in, mm. has there been a slight miscalculation from all the watch brands? Because it did feel mm. like vast majority of them did push the prices up quite a bit. Mm. Of course, we're in, you know, inflation's happening, particularly in Europe and, and in America. So as in prices are going to go up, but is there a little bit of worry that they, those prices were probably set mm. during the watch boom. Mm. And now that there's been a bit of a come down, <laughs> is there going to be a sort of readjustment? Yeah. And, and is everyone just going to go back online do, mm. using Chrono 24 and thinking mm -hmm. actually, you know, what I sold my Zenith for the other day now looks like even better value the guy bought it thank you very much as in um went to a lovely great guy but yeah. as in is that going to be even I, even I th better value now? i because think suddenly that's a yeah. lot lower than what you buy a new zenith for well no, no doubt that just just the prolification of information and knowledge and access now is to the point where you look at piaget for example at the show who launched this series of amazing andy warhol stone dial um case beautifully elegant designs uh, for a single collector who uh, basically had a whole series of different stone dials in platinum stunning but we know that they ask 30 plus almost 40 grand for that new in in the boutique and while i love the watch there's no way in hell i could afford it no way in hell i would suggest anyone to buy it because we know that you might find one you might get lucky they don't make many but you might find one in the secondary market for a great deal less and that's kind of the fun of the chase and the journey is finding something there that's good value so i think uh the pricing you know you're always going to get love or hate or, or bitten as a brand through your pricing uh in the longer term because we all know that the power of the brand lies in its secondary value i'm more worried about the volume of watches being made because what tends to happen and we saw this in kind of 2008 2009 where some of the bigger brands had to kind of destroy stock because they were worried about their brand message, their brand being cannibalized, where a lot of it was being chucked onto the, the gray market and, and, and devalued. And just to protect the brand, they were buying, a lot of the brands were buying it back. And, and my worry is that we've had such a strong two years, three years, it's like now, now we're sort of pulling through the volume and it's like, shit, we're gonna be left with a lot of watch on the, on the shelves. So I would have loved to have been in the conversation because at Watches and Wonders, of course, the, 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 the commercial conversations are going on in the background. So the big groups, the Bucara, the, the Watches Switzerland's of the world, they're all negotiating hard with the brands. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to have known what those conversations were like. Unfortunately, I was very much on the, the media side. You were too busy partying with I was RBC sipping champagne and, and um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what were your favorite? Okay. Uh, in terms of, uh, to pick your top, top three. Yeah. Let's say that. Um, or, or whatever stood out the most. So the Ingenieur, very, very well done. I think it's going to be a smash hit for them. And I think it's going to be along their three Ps, the, mm -hmm. the pilot, Portofino and Portuguese, I think this is now going to come in and start to become a, a real um, part of their business, which it hasn't been in the past. I love the Piaget. I, you know, all, I'm, all I, I run on is same, the same as you and, and, and it's just passion and emotion. I looked at, they took me behind the scenes. What they launched, I didn't like. They launched the Piaget Perpetual Calendar, mm -hmm. I think a stone dial as well, but just didn't look quite right. It looked a bit like the Aquanaut. Was, the, the, what you see, again, this is where being away from it, what you see in the, the magazines and not mm -hmm. online, 
I couldn't work out what that would actually look like in the flesh. Mm. I only saw renditions mm. of the Piaget, the one you're talking about, which, and I also couldn't work out whether that was for a man or for women, yep. but I, I think that's where the industry's going anyway. Yep. I think there's, there's all sorts of watches with diamonds and, yep. and all sorts of other pretty things. You know, I'm sat here wearing this. Um, <laughs> so I have no issue. We, we haven't, got to, we haven't got even to gone to Louis Vuitton yeah. to your purchase either. Yeah. I just couldn't work it out in terms of, I thought that could be incredible. I, I think I said that to them be. immediately. I said, oh, you know, it's interesting. I, I'd be, I said, I'd, I'd be interested to know who ends up buying this. Mm. You guys haven't prescribed who should be buying it. I mean, to me, I just, the Polo is an interesting offer. Um, but I immediately see the Aquanaut and it just doesn't feel quite right. I love Piaget as a brand mm -hmm. and, and you know I'm hunting some yeah. vintage Piaget and mm -hmm. Piaget vintage stuff is just on the march. But immediately they took me behind the scenes there and they're like, hey, we can show you this, but it's none of this is for sale. This is one collector and it's it's Davide Parmigiani, who's uh, he runs, he, he, he was in Lugano. He was a, he's a very famous dealer, Italian dealer. And he's also from Monaco Legend Auction Group. He's a founder there. And he commissioned these, I think 10 Piaget watches with crazy dolls and I loved it. So I love that. And if they were to bring that back and help us a little bit with the pricing mm -hmm. and even gave you the choice, could you imagine if they cost it, if you, if you were able to choose your stone? Yeah. Sorry, I don't know if we're allowed to, <laughs> that is elegant. That in a platinum case, a white gold case, I'd be all over that. It's a big watch, it's a big cushion case, no lugs, goes straight into the case. Incredible. Can I come to that a bit? Because you've then, because I, I asked you your favorite three watches and you've gone for something that that wasn't even, even released. Oh well, yeah, it wasn't released. It's all so, covered. So in, or, or covered, mm. really, by anyone. No. And I did feel from afar, and look, we said that the main thing about this this podcast that was that we were going to be honest. From afar, this year it felt slightly underwhelming. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, in terms of you know what Grand Seiko mm -hmm. had that mm -hmm. that crazy, uh, whatever it was, tour beyond yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the condo. That seemed to have everything in the condo. Yeah. Uh, and there just seemed to be a few of those flashy watches. There felt like there was a number of watches last year where I was yeah. like, wow, that's two, two, two. Oh, that's incredible. The two 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 yeah. as well. There were, there was so much there mm -hmm. and there were watches that were like, well, that's out of my realm, but I also love what they're doing. They're doing something mm -hmm. different. And what I've read and heard is that Rolex, it was a big year for them. Yeah. And so other brands then decided to, to, to hold to back. Mm. But I thought that was a strange decision from other brands because I thought, well, the hype now around watches is so big. And so all my sort of watch geek friends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we were all so excited what was gonna be released. I was kind of actually pleased because I just obviously, you know, sell my, yeah. my underwear yeah. to buy this. <laughs> yeah. And so I was kind of yeah. like thinking, oh, yeah. what happens if I see something that I go, yeah. oh, actually that is incredible and that makes me question my decision. Yeah. And actually I haven't questioned my decision at all, particularly also because everything seemed to be titanium's the yeah, new, yeah, yeah. you know, that's yeah. the new in vogue and, material. And, and, and green and sage green. Now we've yeah. had green dials in the past, but sage yeah. green this year was the color tag launching something, restaurants launching yeah. something in the type uh, three. But even, even the restaurants launch, again, it was a, a different color to, to something that we'd seen at the back end of last year. Yeah. You know, restaurants yeah. as, you, as we yeah. both know, fantastic brand, incredible mm -hmm. what they do, mm -hmm. but it was still just a, it's a new color dial. It yeah. wasn't anything, yeah. Yeah. it was was it was it evolution so, rather than revolution. So I'll tell, you who, I'll tell you who revolution, and I've got to change my answer to this because I wrote something wrong last night in, in my response to this, but Langer mm -hmm. came with one watch, mm -hmm. one watch and a hundred pieces. And that was it. Yeah. And that is a story in itself because mm -hmm. that says a lot about the confidence of where they are as a brand mm -hmm. and, and living more into what they are. Okay. People again, were kicking off about the pricing, but let's be honest, not many of us are going to be considering the first Odysseus complication, mm -hmm. which was a chronograph in this case, really interesting way of exhibiting it. I had the chance to interview the CEO before Mr. Schmidt, uh, with James Stacey, uh, and a guy called Gary Getz, amazing collector. And it was just, it was super cool to see their passion for this. Now, that was a, a movement designed specifically for that watch before 2019 when they launched the Odysseus. So they've been working on this for years. This singular cal cal caliber fits the case back perfectly, automatic. And okay, it's not one that got me saying, how am I gonna make this work? How, mm -hmm. what can I sell? What can I? But it was it was one that was like, wow, this is impressive. You know, this is watch watchmaking at its mm -hmm. absolute peak. Mm -hmm. Touching on a few that have come to mind now, Chopin LUC have been, mm -hmm. along with Piaget, vintage Piaget, have been really gaining momentum. And I didn't even get into bloody uh, Chopin because unfortunately the lady who's the PR is absolutely lovely, but she did say, you know, I need to know if, I've only got a few slots and I need to know what coverage we're getting for, et cetera. Anyway. The, you should have said, have you not seen no, the no, watch no, no. journey? <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen the watch journey yeah. yet. We will send her this episode, but my God, that watch, 36 and a half millimeters, salmon dial, mm -hmm. LUC, micro rotor movement, gear shade dial, that is a proper connoisseur choice. Mm -hmm. And wow, I didn't even see it, but the photos, people who saw it, I quizzed, and they were like, that thing's incredible. Yeah. Uh, Laurent Ferrier, because okay. of course, 
part of this story here and, and the image that you're seeing on the cover is my journey from my first Lauren Freire, which is genuinely a, uh, you know, a genuinely a, a, a life uh, affirming moment. And it's been years and years in the making, but just seeing them, okay, they haven't reinvented the wheel. It's, it's a galley case, 40 mil round case, uh, red gold with a brushed satin green dial. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. and, and that was one of the stars for me. So it's funny from afar, Mm. My, my sort of choices, the, the watches that, that stood out for me, and, it, and this is where it's, it's quite nice actually how we match up because mm. it's, it shows actually it's a good job from the other watch YouTubers that they do when they do showcase these watches because, yeah, for me, that the show pile you see, that the salmon dial, I, I was like, that was something I gravitated to straight mm -hmm. away and just thought that looked incredible. You say micro rotor, the Laurent Ferrier, the bits that I saw, I also loved it. The other one was the Reverso Chronograph. Chronograph. Sorry, I should have said that. Uh, Technically, that was incredible. Yeah, and, and it also, it just proportionally looked Good. decent because that's the worry with reverses that they can be overly thick mm -hmm. when they do too much with mm -hmm. the complications. And of course, another sage green, another mm -hmm. sage green, beautiful in the, in the, in the metal. <clears throat> the case, I, we were touching on it before, um, but the Reverso for me in the tribute size is the perfect size. Mm -hmm. This size to me, a little bit big, mm -hmm. but I absolutely love the complication. Got to applaud them for that. And the Fagliano uh, fabric leather mm, combination yes. was amazing. Yeah. amazing. Which, by the way, I, I kind of feel AP have led that a little mm. bit with regards to the code mm. and what they did with the, the sort of sporty, sporty but dress, yep. dress sporty. And I, I kind of feel a lot of brands are going that way now, which mm -hmm. I really like. Mm -hmm. I really like that vibe. It's sort of, yeah, it's a casual dress look. And I, I, I absolutely love that. Um, the other two that, that stood out, Actually, Mont Blanc and Minerva, yeah. I thought looked look cool. I know, but again, that's a that's a re, bezel. you know, it's a slightly different mm -hmm. color to what they've done already. And, and that's the chronograph with the rotating bezel. Yes. Yeah. And apparently designed by Richard Habring, someone told me in mm -hmm. my DMs, which okay. is pretty cool. Who owns his own business in Austria? Yes, in Austria. He did yeah. a lot of work with yeah. the BBC. Yeah. yeah. Cool, and I saw cool those ha those Habring watches in the flesh. I think mm -hmm. are great. Um, and the one the other who I don't think get a lot of love out there, Chrono Swiss. I actually mm. the, the I forget what it's called, but it was their twenty year anniversary one mm. that they had enamel. Hmm. On the, I don't know, I, ju I just thought it was, it seemed beautifully executed from, yeah. from far, but again, no one really talks about it. Yeah. They, they sort of don't get the love. Yeah. And again, they do something that's unique. They do something that's different. Yeah. And, and those for me, yeah. from afar, were what stood out from the ones that were actually part of <laughs> watches and wonders. But, but, it, it, but there was none there that made me go, I regret this purchase. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. okay, and I got there first with Titanium before <laughs> the yeah. Titanium wave of, um, of everything else. Now, Oh Christ, we've got a lot to cover. No, there's a lot, there's minutes. a lot. A lot to cover. You mentioned Pia Piaget yes. and you mentioned the stone dials. Yes. So let's go in there because it's been hilarious mm -hmm. with our watch journey together with this. So bear in mind, we came up with the idea of this, what was it, December? Yep. And Justin was like, oh, we'll, we'll do it on our own little watch journeys and whatnot. And I was then worried about after buying this that that was such a huge watch journey. You have actually been perfect for this on the other hand because you've been every sort of, it feels like every you know, five days, there's a like, yeah. have you seen this? Oh, I'm, I'm tempted to this, I'm chatting to this guy about this. And, oh, this one's just come in here. What do you think of this? Yeah. And, and sadly, I'm your worst person totally. to be sending that to because totally. I'm like, yes, do it, know, go know, for it, love it. Um, so let's start with, I think the first one you did send me mm. was the Piaget and mm. it was a, a marble dial, stone mm. dial. Mm. And I love that. And they, they seem to be coming in. We've seen the what tiger, they've Was done, it the tiger's right? eye? I think it was the, the tiger's, tiger's eye. eye. Yeah, God, I don't know where this, I don't know where the Piaget story started, but following a few of our friends here in London who work in the industry, it just seems that the Beta 21 story, which was a, a development that took place in, in the 70s to combat the, the crisis, the currency crisis and the courts crisis. Um, and it was a whole bunch of brands coming together, Patek, Piaget and others, IWC as well, um, to, to, to create this really accurate um, quartz watch. Piaget were the only ones that went for this rectangular case. And ironically, it was the, the most accurate watch made full stop, but they didn't even have a seconds hand on it. So you couldn't tell how accurate it was, which I thought was the Love ultimate that. play. <laughs> so cool. It's super yeah. cool. And and I think the support of, of, of a few people behind, getting behind stone dials again. So I, I was looking at the, the tiger's eye and that was up for grabs with a guy in Switzerland didn't he sold it um then i met with ben from watch brothers who's a friend of ours and he's got this amazing onyx white gold uh, case um and and i loved it saw it last week but just a little bit outside the budget for me um and yeah piaget i'm just still i'm still very much and it sort of stems also from that that andy warhol mm -hmm. watch case which is that sort of oval uh, porthole shape and tiered case as well and and so i'm sort of just thinking I'm not, I'm not in any rush for a Piaget, but I'd love 
a vintage Peugeot at some point. Why don't they get the love that, the, you know, why are they not in the conversation as much? I mean, when you talk about historic brands, they're, mm -hmm. they're a huge historic brands. And mm -hmm. when you talk about, particularly for us, I think they, they appeal to both of us because mm -hmm. they, again, we always talk about AP not being afraid to do something different, not yeah. being afraid to throw something out there. And they are very much that sort of brand. And, yep. and, and you go into a Piaget store, mm. and obviously the women's collection is incredible. Mm. Their history is mm. incredible in terms of the different mm. watches that they have. Mm. So why? <laughs> why do everyone just seem to chat about, you know, Patek and yeah. AP and that they don't... Let's not forget the Elta Plano, which actually yeah. set records for, yeah. like, the thinnest um, of all time a couple of years ago before the Richard Mille and before yeah, the Bulgari. And, yes. But, you know, amazing technical watchmakers and very elegant brand. Just, I don't think their storytelling has been very good for the last few years. They haven't really had a clear hook that you can get yourself attached to. Where, where do they live in culture? Where does Piaget live? It's, it's, it's unclear. Um, but look, beautifully elegant brand. I think I just, I love the romance of the brand. I look back to those adverts, the, the polo adverts, the originals. It's like, wow, this is a sexy brand. So, Mm -hmm. You had these marble dial. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what happened? What, why didn't you end up pulling the I think, I think one of the things that just keeps us sane is just always keeping a bit of a, a rod in the fire, if you will. You know, mm -hmm. just I like the idea of... <laughs> You're a teaser. You're a dangler. I like, I like, dangler. I like dangling it in. <laughs> and I think just the, the, the potential for there to be a deal, the potential for there to be okay. something fun yeah. is always cool. Um, God, I looked at us. I was speaking to another guy selling one in the UK, solid gold yellow gold case, yellow gold bracelet um, with an onyx dial and apparently it was just super heavy. I didn't get to see it in the person in person, but they're big watches because the mm -hmm. Beta 21 caliber was massive. So back then this was like a huge thing and it's still a huge watch now. But yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm going to have one at some point. I just don't know which one and I don't know when, but I think they're doing amazing things in the secondary market at the moment. Uh, and then the moment will come. It, it will come. Watches will come, come to you, yeah. right? Is what it... do they say? The teacher comes when the student's ready. Yes. <laughs> the old Buddha say. <laughs> but, but I do. But that's not in any way connected to watches. But but I do. I do actually think there is a thing with watches where it comes I think when it's you meant can. to be. Yeah. In, I, I'm a believer in fate mm. in a way. And I do believe that if it's that right place, right time as we yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about it in terms yeah. of it, it, there is that special thing with it. So we went, so you first went down the Piaget route yes. and I was all for it. And then you sent me a, a picture of an ellipse, ellipse yeah. uh, a Patek <laughs> ellipse, which again, I mean, who's not for the ellipse, especially with um, I think, I think Mr. I've John Wick, you know, the, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. What he's, he's been he's seen, wearing, hasn't he? He's been wearing I them. think I've shown that to Nat, my wife and, and <clears> some others. And like the immediate response is that's like an old guy's watch, you know, that's like your grandfather's watch mm -hmm. sort of vibe. But the ellipse, that case shape is so elegant. It's not an Aquanaut, it's not a Nautilus. Uh, it's not really, it's it, it's something of its own. Mm -hmm. And John Reardon from Collectability, you know, the Patek expert, um, you know, that's his favorite res reference from Patek, full stop. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just really elegant. The clasp is again, an echo of the shape. It's this oval case, uh, oval shape on the, they used to make lighters. They they, they made caps with the logo, with the shape on it. It's it's so much m more iconic and, and sexier, cooler than a Nautilus for me. Mm -hmm. I just think, wow. Yeah. Like, you're wearing an ellipse, dude. Fantastic! Yeah. Like you don't need to be. You're not shaken it by anything. It is that watch geek thing, though, right? Because you see someone in an ellipse, <laughs> yes, and you like, go, like yeah. especially, especially not a dude who's about to to give up the ghost, right? Who's not got the 22 year old bride on the, on the arm, and he's in his <laughs> late 80s. You yeah. know, we can see the ellipse on him, and it's not quite as cool as, yeah. as maybe a younger. Well, that was why I said, you know, John. I forgot. Well, who's John Wick's actual? Oh God, what was his name? Character. Um, Keanu, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So I thought he sort of, but um. Yeah, I also think the Calatrava now mm. has almost become so sort of, oh yeah, you mm -hmm. see the guy and the gentleman. Mm -hmm. They've done so many different iterations with mm. the Calatrava. But no one's done it the lips. Yeah, the and, and let's be clear, the like lips. It's, it's the cool and it's become the, the <laughs> Calatrava of 10 years ago is now the ellipse, if that makes sense. They, 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 make, they make a platinum one with a blue dial and they make a, a rose gold case with, um, a, a, is it a blue dial? I can't quite remember. Maybe it's just, yeah, maybe it's a grey dial. But th those are the two examples, and they're called the Jumbo because they're larger. Mm -hmm. But they're not actually, this is super geeky, but apparently they're not actually the golden ratio. So, you know, the whole the whole golden ratio, they're not actually the golden ratio. Whereas the midsize, the slightly smaller one that was made in white gold with grey dial, made with um, yellow gold case and grey dial, uh, white gold, blue dial, they came in a whole myriad of different colours, and that size, that sort of mid-size from the 90s, that is the size to have if you can pull it off, I think. And so, great value in the secondary, probably less than, so between 15 and 16 grand, which is an awful lot of money, but given that this new one retails for upwards of 40, it represents good value. Yeah, and I, th I think, um, so we go from sort of the most, yep. the most classic, beautiful, <laughs> svelte yep. 
watches yep. to yep. so then we're going yeah yeah really liking that to this yeah uh, this <laughs> louis vuitton vuitton time zone yes time zone um, a skull yeah a skull called. which you know it, so what happened how did you go from your lips <laughs> to that i mean so what I well, one you've got some money so, in your pocket were you drinking were you drinking yeah, yeah. or were you were you drunk yeah um, so tell us about no, tell so us about what happened basically. tell us about the journey of how that came up for one when you first saw <laughs> yeah, it yeah and so I think my journey, journey with Louis Vuitton absolutely did not start queuing on Bond Street for a new ha a handbag or, or, or trunk case <laughs> or any of that stuff. I've got no collect connection to Louis Vuitton or quite frankly interest personally in mm -hmm. their brand. But in 2000 and when did they buy it? 2011, sorry, I got my little cheat sheet here. Louis Vuitton acquired the Fabrique de Tomp, which we now know as the, the manufacturing facility for Daniel Roth and others. And that's recently as of last week weekend, actually this weekend gone in the FT, it's now been uh, discussed that Gerogenta is going to be relaunched as a brand, mm. you know, uh, Daniel Roth the week before with the Souscription Tourbillon. Yeah. So there's a lot of history there. And this was a design that, um, in my mind, way before, I think before I even was in the industry, it was like, it was ingrained in me. This very, very odd, colorful dial was ingrained in me in some way. I can remember seeing it launched. I never thought I needed it. Da, 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 da. Then of course I got this Louis Vuitton Monterey 2 from the late 80s, this thing made by IWC in ceramic, green ceramic. Still can't believe you sold that. I have sold that. Oh God, but we can't discuss that. No, the, the emotion's still too raw. It's genuinely still too raw to discuss that. But we have, well, especially because I, I know the guy bought it. Yeah, yeah, well he's and, kind and of- he, he's messaged me saying like, can't, can't believe, believe you sold, sold that this. to me. I mean, what a madman. And I, I was, I, to be honest, Justin, I did reply going, yeah, yeah I can't not. believe you sold and, that. But he's found a box now and he's found some other things for it. And I think he's agreed that he's going to sell it back to me if I want it at a, okay, but he's a good guy. We're going, to, we're going to discuss that another time. Um, but anyway, my interest in Louis Vuitton kind of was, was through that watch because it was the ultimate talking watch, talking piece. And basically I saved, searched on Chrono 24 Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. I don't like the tambour design, the other thing they make, terrible, but this, got me thinking because Watches of Knightsbridge popped it up a couple weeks ago and it's 39 millimeters stainless steel for less than two and a half grand. Okay, ETA caliber in the back, peripheral rotor and this incredible dial. I love a world timer. I couldn't read the time to start with, you know, totally you'd be forgiven for that. And well, dude, that's not what watches are about. They're not about that. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I, you'd be I couldn't read the bloody time. And so next minute I was like, my God, this is a bit of a sleeper. Like no one's really talking about this. No one has ever, apart from I was reading some articles that Hidinki published back in 2000. And when was it? So 2014, they launched a 41 millimeter version, mm -hmm. which had a hand painted dial and believe it or not, sold for upwards of 60,000 USD. Okay, so the comments were brutal, okay. as expected. A hand-painted dial, super cool, but 41 millimeters white gold. I don't know who bought them. They then, a couple years later, 2017, they launched this. So they gave it a couple of years, and they came with something that was more approachable for like five, six, seven thousand US dollars retail. Mm -hmm. But to think that I could have this much fun mm -hmm. for less than two and a half grand, I just thought it would be nuts not to. And to me probably the perfect size. The The way it's soldered on, the case, uh, the lugs are soldered on to match the, the old trunks, the original trunks for Louis Vuitton, which is super cool. The joy came when I tried it and I put it on. You know, you've got to have a watch in your hand mm -hmm. to fully appreciate mm -hmm. it. I got it last week. And the way it sits, it looks like it's painted on the crystal because it's so flush to, to the dial. And now you can read the time instantly. When you live with it for a bit of time, you can read it straight away. Um, Inside here, we've got the markers, which actually are literally painted on the crystal and, 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 and just super cool. The gray is amazing. Forgive the strap because this is the strap it came on. I'm going to get a, a, a grained uh, sort of leather cross hatch from Mulquin in gray to echo the, the center, just to quiet it down a little bit. I, I, I do like I, that. I know I you like, like yeah. I knew you'd love that strap, <clears throat> but to me, just a little bit too much. I can't say whether it's one that's going to be with us forever uh, at this stage, but we're dating. It might, it might last a the long time. The original tuna date was great, and, and, and we're going to go on another date. I would have swiped right as well. You would have so, yeah, yeah, because 100%. immediately, but yeah. honestly, I, I, I share watches every day, and there hasn't been a more polarizing one than this. Some people absolutely love it, some people hate it, and the best analogy was from Under the Cuff, a friend in the UK, who described this style as what it looks like when you push too hard on your eyes, and then you open them. And Britt, what's the technical term for that? Phosphenes. Phosphenes, where you get the colours popping into your eyes. And <laughs> I've got, I've got one question for for you on it. In terms yeah. of the, so just first of all, when I saw it pop up on Hidinki, I straight away loved it. I just loved it again. Again, I like colour difference you in like colour. And, like and I, I, as you know, I love world timers. Yep. I think it, it's, it's amazing what they do. And yeah, and 
and I just like things that are different. This, you know, it takes you a while to realize it is a world time. Mm -hmm. What are the flags? Are they the, do you know, are they, are they synonymous with the nations? Is, yeah. that, is it, is it, is it like, you know, cause they look like the sort of flags that they use in, in sailing. And, yeah, and sailing, sailing, sailing. Yeah. So I think they're a nautical theme. I think it's nautical. I haven't yet got to the bottom of that. So this is the fun part, right? About watches. Mm -hmm. I've learned a little bit about it, but there's an awful long way to go. And Mr. Arnaud, the 24 year old, who's the CEO of Louis Vuitton watches right now. And Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth. Mm -hmm. um, he just messaged me back on Insta when I messaged him to say, I, I, I bought this and I love it. I'd yeah. love to get some more information about it because I don't know anything about it. And he was like, yeah, 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 we can get the paperwork. We can tell you a bit about when it was sold, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the journey of it. I've still got a lot to discover, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just starting the process. Last question on, on the, these type of watches. Mm -hmm. So it's a fashion house yep. watch, yep. okay? And so <laughs> lots of people out there have, have sort of a, a pushback <laughs> on fashion house. Yeah. So, you know, I've got my Show May, which yeah. is also a fashion yeah. house watch. And we got the Bulgari. And we got the Bulgari. But, but like, is, is it snobbery? Because a lot of the fashion house watches, I mean, look, look at Hermes in terms mm. of what they've done with the HO8. Mm. Mm. Why is there that snobbery? Because mm. chatting to people within the industry, often those fashion houses, you know, they won't throw out anything terrible. That Their finish is often good. Like mm. I was told with Xiaomi being a jewellery expert, mm. their finish will be fantastic. Well, in terms of Cartier, the case. let's not forget Cartier. Cartier. Exactly, that's what I mean. I mean. So as in, but, but there's certain fashion houses like Cartier who yep. have this sort of, oh, it's okay to like Cartier. Yep. And then there are other ones like Louis Vuitton that people go, no, 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 yeah, no that, yeah. that's a, yep. that's a, so why is there certain stigma with certain fashion houses? I think originally when this was launched, you know, this might have been, or certainly the painted doll would have probably been sold to a client who's a big spender who's bought all the, the, the bags in the world mm -hmm. and probably didn't understand or connect with watches in the way that we all do. Um, but in time, the sea change happens, right? You know, look at Bulgari, 10 years of the Octo. Mm. And okay, it started maybe selling to their clients they knew in-house, but now it's very much reached through multiple awards, et cetera, et cetera. It's now reaching a wider audience. It hasn't yet got there. You know, still having Bulgari on the doll, having Louis Vuitton on the doll, hasn't reached that Cartier stage, but Cartier have been around for a yeah, hell of a lot longer making yeah. watches. Um, <laughs> so it just takes, takes time. I mean, I personally am not, a snob in the sense that, you know, Louis Vuitton, you know, it's an amazing business. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it more from its creativity perspective and it's an amazing business. I don't associate with it in its current offer product wise, but this is really interesting to me. And it's kind of like that double-edged, like it's, it's a look a little bit closer moment. It's like, you're really into watches, you're wearing a Louis Vuitton. Like, I tell you who wears Louis Vuitton and who loves Louis Vuitton is James Dowling, Mr. Uh, Rolex, or, yeah, Mr. Rolex on Instagram. James Dowling, lovely man, okay. He's, a, he's been in the industry for years and years, dealer, knows everyone, everything. Yeah. He wears a, a Louis Vuitton and not this one, but he wears another one, super complicated Louis Vuitton. I don't even know the reference. Yeah. But whenever I sit with him at a press event or whatever, and he's like, yeah, he's like wearing this Louis Vuitton, I'm like, wow, that's super cool. He's yeah. gone in his own way. He's, got, yeah. he's gone a different direction. But it just says, right, buy what you love. Yeah. And talking about to, to the segue in, because I was going, right, we're actually gonna segue from a giant <laughs> yeah. corporation yeah, yeah. of Louis Vuitton, Tom, who's a fashion to... brand, to FP Jean, yes. who's the completely the other way, yes. and, and talking about buying what you love. Yeah. I totally fell in love at two places that were sort of um, off the, the, the press grid at Watches and Wonders and in Geneva. I got the chance to go and see Laurent Ferrier. I've got this titanium um, blue origin coming. To me, probably the most elegant watch ever made. I mean, that is just a huge call, but I, just, call, I think yeah. it's the most drop dead gorgeous thing in the world. It's super light and titanium. It's coming next year. I cheekily messaged them before the show and said, guys, could I pick up the watch this year? And they're like, no, no, it's States 2024. <laughs> so that didn't come. But Because that was supposed to be what we were doing. <laughs> we were talking about this year. Yeah, yeah. But Laura Ferry, I mean, <clears throat> wow, wow. Oh, wow. Just unbelievable. I also got a chance to go and see the guys at FP Jean and I got to see the new um, uh, hand. Uh, yeah. Cop yeah, Coppola, Coppola yeah. where they had the only watch a few years ago uh, in Tantalum. Ironically, a few minutes after leaving the boutique, I actually saw the dude wearing that watch. What, so, Francois Paul? No, no, the oh, owner okay. of the one of one from wow. the only watch in Tantalum. Wow. And he was at the the um, smaller watch event in Geneva, the uh, ACHI um, thing, and he was wearing it. And I was, I was like, oh boy. Saw it just in the wild, I mean, in the wild kind of, but I was like, oh, that's yeah. a couple of million quid he's paid for yeah. that watch. Anyway, fell in love at FP Jean mm -hmm. with a 40 millimeter um, automatic Octa uh, reserve uh, with salmon dial um, and gray. I, I, I looked at both and I was like, oh my God, these are, this is quintessential Jean. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Wow. And the funny thing is there, which is where this podcast could just end up as merging into one person, is that when you sent that to me and said, I've fallen in love with this, Pete, this is what I want, yeah. this is the... And I said, well, I was on list for that. two FB Jean watches. One was the one yep. you've just said, yep. and the other one was this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one came through for mm. the other one. So we could end up sat here with exactly the same model <laughs> together. <laughs> but, but I can see why, you well, know... Like at the bottom line is I'm in all sorts of pain financially right now. There's no way in hell I could make it happen. But in, in classic style, I said to the guys, look, put me down for a platinum salmon doll. Now they don't have it in the catalog. They don't have it on the website, but they tell me mm -hmm. they still do make them. And if it takes a year, if it takes 10 years, that's no problem. The longer, the better, quite mm -hmm. frankly, just to make it, <laughs> make it, make it possible. I just gravitated straight to that salmon. I was like, wow, okay, it's the rose gold because that's what you can buy mm -hmm. now. But I said to Nathan, I was like, could this be in platinum? He was like, yeah, I think it might be. And that to me might just be uh, one of the punchiest combos in all of watchmaking. Well, that, that, that way you'd have the opposite of my switch, right? My mm. Devine, yeah, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. the other way around. Yep. And it's not supposed to be that way yep. around. Um, and you did touch on something that I think is <laughs> is another debate for another day in terms of that when you're putting yourself on wait lists. I had MBNF message me at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was really good of them. It was the guys in Dubai, the Evo, the Evo. Whale, and it was uh, not the Evo, <laughs> sadly not that, that price category, but the Legacy 101 machine in steel, blue dial. I put my name on that at, at, watches in, at, at Dubai Watch Week. Mm -hmm. Got the call. And no, they just messaged to say, we're going through our list and we're clearing, are you still interested in this watch? And I just said yes to this. And so mm. I actually responded and said, yes, I am, but probably in two years time <laughs> when I've sold <laughs> whatever else. And they didn't I reply. Can, you know, they replied and said, yep, yeah, we'll keep you on the list. As in, look, they're in such demand. It's going to yeah. take a little bit of time. So it's funny when you say, mm. you, you put your name on things mm. that you go, actually, if you turned around tomorrow and said, do you want this? Yeah. You can't afford it. Let's finish with a story about Mr. Jean himself, because you got to meet him a few weeks back. So tell us, I'll put that one back. Yeah. Tell us, tell us uh, what what you heard about him that made you chuckle. So Lucas from uh, FB Jean in Paris. Often when you buy a, a luxury watch, you get it get given a, either a little gift. <laughs> if they don't give you a gift, you often get a, a little trip. Or, or uh, I, I, bought, I bought a Rolex in, in Birmingham, and um, they actually bought dinner for Ali and myself when we went down there. And so this time, Lucas just said, "Hey." You know, do you want to come to Geneva? It was just before Watch Some Wonders. And to tour the, the, the Dahl factory and the manufacturer. Uh, and we were fortunate enough, Francois Paul Jean was there, mm -hmm. so I got to meet him. Mm -hmm. Lovely guy. But we also did a dinner with uh, Masaki, who mm -hmm. is there. I'm just going to check. International sales manager, I want to get that correct, because <laughs> you never know what people's headlines are. Yeah. But he's someone who's known FB Jean, um, the person, for about 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously my first question was, what's he like? Yep. In, what is he like as a let's person? Let's be honest, the reputation at times is that he's quite sharp, quite direct, mm -hmm. quite difficult. Yeah. But and, in reality. And that was kind of the feedback he gave straight away. He said, look, so number one, look, he's an artist. You've got to remember mm -hmm. he's an artist. So artists are often difficult. Mm -hmm. um, he said, what's fascinating is that you will go to him with an idea. And he said, this, this was what they used to do over and over again. I hope he doesn't mind me repeating this story, but I thought it was a great story. Mm -hmm. And he says, no. Mm. Instantly, mm. almost to everything. Mm. Is it no, no, no? And then often, what what would end up happen? <laughs> they would, they would, um, they would get him to say yes on stuff. And then even when something came through, he'd be like, "Why is this being produced?" Uh, and they were like, well, "Well, here's you know, your you said yes to it. Said yes. And he was like, "No, no, I didn't want that." And so it got to a point where if he did say yes to anything, they had to have it sort of written. there, written, in so a legal document. Show him the NDA. that you have said yes to this. But obviously, the reason he does that is that if you say yes to something, you, you can't quite go back. So it, the best thing is to say no to everything. But he listens mm. to everyone mm. and he lets it permeate and goes to sleep thinking about it, and then it it goes around in his head. And then sometimes he'll then come round mm. to that idea. Mm. Um, and so he's open to ideas. Mm. He wants more ideas. But being an artist, obviously, it's it's sort of you don't quite know which way he's going to head. You can wake up one morning and think this and, 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 and something else. So it sounds like it's someone who's difficult to work with. And it can come across as a little bit cold sometimes. Mm. But Masaki said he's one of those people where because he's that sort of artist, he can actually sometimes be a bit reserved and, mm, and, mm. and inward. But um, once you get to know him, mm -hmm. and obviously if you know him for 25 years like Masaki has, not he was a lovely guy who was fantastic and so knowledgeable and, and showed me around everywhere. Uh, he said, actually, he's, he's actually a really sensitive guy and actually mm. he's a really good guy. He's a really good person 
and is obviously the genius that we all think in terms of exactly what we were saying before. He has the, the, the tri-factor, even the quad factor you might say, is in, in terms of being a, a genius with regards to his artistic flair, having that engineering in terms of what, what he, the watches he's able to create mm -hmm. and then the business side of things mm. as well in mm. terms of knowing how that works. So he is a very, very rare person mm. and a very, very special person. But mm. within all of that, deep down, he's a really good guy, mm. but he's just someone you've got to get to know. And yeah. I just thought that was a, a great story. It made me sort of love his mm. watches more because mm. they are so distinct. So They're think. so singular in their design. Mm. And it actually, it's helpful sometimes to work with someone that tells you what they think. Mm -hmm. I'm the worst because I'll tell you what you want to, to hear, not what you need to hear. <laughs> yeah. or, and that's, that's, that's it. Um, People are right there, we are on the hour mark. So we said 20 minutes to 30 minutes, that's the hour. This is the 44 millimeter case episode. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Go well, cheers. <laughs>